Hey, what's going on guys? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces and today I just wanted to show you some data uh, and do a quick comparison of two GPUs. Uh, so I have two GPUs, a 980 Ti and a GTX 1070. Both are blower style cards. Now these blower style cards tend to get pretty clogged up when it comes to dust. So a good old cleaning can help out in performance, especially air airflow. But uh, while tearing it down, I decided to do a quick test. One, I put uh, on my non ATI GPU, I put liquid metal. On my 1070, I put uh, Cryonaut, uh, from, both from Ther Thermal Grizzly. Um, the reason I did that is because my 9 ATI is my hottest card, usually hitting or averaging around 70 to 72C, and then my uh, 1070 around the same, you know, uh, 70, 71C. So I wanted to do a comparison. Now, they're not the same GPU, but they sit around the same temperature and they're in the same rig in the same area of my household. So this will be a good test. Now, I did um, ask uh, Gamers Nexus Steve if, uh, you know, you think I should do it. He told me or advised me that I would see a marginal gain or a marginal improvement in temperatures. Um, so it's not really worth it. However, I tested it. Um, and, and went ahead with it myself as you can see and I wanted to show you the data before I show you that data um, I'm going to show you a couple clips of me tearing down this assembly how I clean the blower style cards and also if you're interested in any of the products that I use especially the nail polish which is used to protect the components on the PCB around the GPU die that's going to be linked in the description um, and any other materials that I use during this video obviously besides q-tips and rubbing alcohol you know where to get that but if you're interested in that, check the description. I'm going to show you the, what I did, application, disassembly, all that good stuff. And then I will go over my results with you.
Alright, so now that you've seen the disassembly and application, let's talk about the results. Now the 1070, um, I've seen an overall result depending on the algorithm of a temperature drop anywhere ranging from 5 to 3C, again depending on the algorithm. Uh, for the 980Ti, which is using liquid metal, I did see a significant gain. Now here in the program you see that we're sitting around 62C, that's, that's average over you know 48 hours. Uh, 62C is where we're at peaking. Now I do have the fan profile set at 90%, but before that I had to have the fan profile set at 100 to 97%. That was probably mostly due because all the dust that was caked up as you saw, uh, but now it's getting really good airflow and I have the fan set at 90%. Even if I had it at auto, I saw the peak temperatures get to 65. So setting it at 90% uh, versus auto, um, I see you know a pretty good reduction. So this liquid metal application to 980Ti increased or improved performance, uh, uh, or the thermal performance, I guess you could say, of the 980Ti uh, quite a bit, anywhere between 8 to 5C, depending on the algorithm. So against the cryonaut um, from Thermal Grizzly and the liquid metal conducto knot, uh, we're and we're seeing a pretty good gains. Now the reason why you would go uh, with a normal thermal paste application is because you don't want to short out any of the components around your GPU or CPU uh, if you delid your CPU or, or you just want to apply you know uh, thermal paste to your GPU. Well liquid metal if that touches any of the components especially the little transistors or components around the GPU die and makes a connection you're going to short that GPU or component out and then you're you got a big paperweight. So that's where the nail polish comes in. You would apply a layer around or on those components around the GPU die or around the CPU die on the transistors. So that way if liquid metal does seep out for some reason or another, which it shouldn't, if you apply a thin layer on the die and then on the IHS or heat sink, then it shouldn't seep out. If you use too much, then that's your own fault. You only want a nice little layer uh, on there, but the nail polish would help you out in protecting those components from being shorted out. So again, those things are going to be linked in the description below. Uh, check it out if you're interested. It definitely it's something I would recommend. Maybe more or less, um, if if you see your GPU temperatures are, are staying consistently higher than what you're comfortable with. Obviously, 72C is within spec, but from coming from a mining mindset or perspective. Um, you really want your GPU temperatures to be as low as possible. You want your hash rate to be as high as possible by pulling the least amount of electricity. And that's what, you know, that's what it's all about, efficiency. So that I got it some better temperatures for my GPUs now. Uh, I'm pulling the maximum hash rate for the le least amount of electricity usage. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, share, subscribe, and comment below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Um, if you're interested in, in maybe I take the 980Ti and pull it out and put it into my main system and maybe do some gaming tests uh, to see how it performs temperature wise, uh, let me know if you're interested in that and I'll put it, you know, make another video in the future. Maybe. We'll see. Alright guys, I'm out. Take care.